morning, Liberty family. We're excited you're here this morning, and uh, just want to invite you to come on in, find a place, uh, and join us as we begin our service of worship. Uh, I invite you to stand, and we're just going to start our service this morning, just singing a couple of praises to God, and, and uh, so we invite you to join us. Would you bow with me in prayer as, as uh, we, we start our service this morning? Father God, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for just the opportunity that we have to come and worship you this morning. And God, uh, we just lay all of the, the things that we're carrying in our lives at your feet right now, all the good, the struggle, um, the hard things. And we just trust you, Jesus. And this morning, we just want to praise you and thank you because you were so good uh, to us. And, and Father, so faithful. And so this morning, we just want to praise you. And we want to we give thanks. And we want to hear from you too, God. So we just invite you to speak truth into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that your word uh, tells us and promises us that you are for us, not against us. And Lord, we've been created in your image, and as a result, we can have relationship with you through Jesus Christ. We thank you for everything that you have done to make it possible for us to have that face-to-face -face relationship with you. Lord, thank you for sending your son Jesus, who became our substitute on the cross so that we can experience reconciliation to our God of the universe, that we can experience forgiveness, Lord, that we can experience a new life, eternal life. And so, Father, I pray that our, our minds and our attitudes and our hearts this morning will be focused. Lord, we pray against all the distractions that we may have brought into here this morning. Lord, we just pray that uh, those distractions would go to the back of our mind, and Lord, we can focus on you uh, for the next several moments. Lord, uh, thank you that uh, you not only love us, but you love people from all tongues and tribes and nations. And Lord, we thank you for those who have chosen uh, to go forth and proclaim the good news of Christ in many, many different parts of the world. And so, Father, we pray for them as uh, they worship today, or have already worshiped today. And Lord, we just pray that uh, you would protect them, that you would guide them, and that you would grant them your strength. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, hey, you're sounding pretty good this morning. That's good. Uh, one of the uh, values that we have here at Liberty is the value that uh, we want to be a church that uh, not only prays for and sends uh, individuals from our church to all sorts of different parts of our nation and around the world, but we also want to be involved in the lives of uh, those who have made that decision to go. And uh, we've been very excited here recently uh, hearing about uh, Tony's desire to, to go to Indonesia um, with Reach Global. And uh, we've got two of our uh, teenage youth that are out right now um, for about a six month missions term. And so we're excited. But today we have another privilege of uh, introducing you to some uh, uh, a family that we support. Um, they, they are with Reach Global. Reach Global is basically the missions arm of the Evangelical Free Church of America. So whenever you see here Reach Global, that's E-Free Missions. And so um, we have the privilege of having uh, uh, John and Joe Beth Lee, who are with Reach Global in Japan. And uh, I'm just going to ask you to give them a good old-fashioned Liberty E-Free welcome as they come up and they share about what they're doing. Hey, good morning. Um, my name is John Lee, and this is Joe Beth. As you can see from the picture, we have two kids, and uh, some of you might be able to guess we have one on the way. Uh, actually, one of my, my littlest one already took uh, creative liberties with my name tag, so that's how you'll know me. Um, but actually, uh, Joe Beth and I were both Iowa born and raised. I was born and raised in Des Moines, Iowa, and Joe Beth was born and raised in a town called Atlantic in western Iowa. And uh, God worked in our lives to bring us to himself and to, uh, and to gain also his desire to share him with people who have never heard about him before. And over a long journey uh, through our college years and beyond, uh, God put, centered our, our attention on Japan, on the Japanese people. Um, and you know, we've, we've actually been in this partnership with you for seven years now. At least 2020 will be the seventh anniversary of our partnering with you. And uh, we come here, you know, and it really is something to celebrate. It's, but we're here to celebrate God's faithfulness. And we're not here to celebrate, to share what, what we've accomplished, or to share what you've accomplished, but to celebrate what God has accomplished. He's sovereign and he can do it all. We haven't given him anything that he needs himself, but in a sovereign way, he's brought us together. And I just want to celebrate his faithful, faithfulness this morning. Go to the next slide. And so I want to introduce you to our home. This is Tokyo. Uh, this is not what we see every day, but uh, this, this city of 38 million people is what we call home. Now, it's easy, easy to look, like, look at this picture and just feel like, how in the world uh, do you even begin you know, to bring the gospel to a place like this? 
But when God moves you into a place, you realize that there are uh, just individuals created in his image. The woman who bags our groceries, uh, the guy who sweeps the, uh, in front of his shop every morning and greets us, uh, Brooke and her classmates when she goes to school. Uh, you just start to see people one by one. And as you get to know people, you have opportunities to, to share the gospel and to demonstrate what, uh, what, who God is to them. And so I hope when you, when you see the picture of the city, you won't just hold it at a distance, but that you'll begin to see there are millions and millions of people made in God's image, image, and he's waiting for them to hear the gospel. That's why God has sent us there, to proclaim his gospel to them. So moving on to the next photo. So um, one of Reach Global's values is to work in a team. And we just want to praise the Lord for our team and introduce you to them. We, we work in a team with one other family, uh, the Nakazawa family in the lower right is Shige Nakazawa and his wife Luann in the blue scarf. Um, she's actually from Iowa and they have four kids. Our kids just look like brothers and sisters basically so they're all mixed up in there. And, um, and then there are two young single guys um, who work with us and then there's another national Japanese woman who's uh, holding our little girl Brooke in that picture. Her name is Michio. So Michio next to her is Adam from America and on the other side is Kevin. And these guys, um, they're, when we're in Japan, they're, they're our family, and they, they fill in those roles of aunts and uncles and cousins, and uh, we just praise God for them and how they lift us up every day as a team. Yeah, and when it comes to team, you've been praying along with us for a healthy team. We've been through a lot of ups and downs as a team, but still, God has kept us tightly knit together, and we continue to move forward in this work. And in fact, we've been praying for God to send for the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. Um, and God has been answering those prayers. Adam and Kevin are the fruit of your prayers, our prayers together. Uh, and we have more people on the way. Um, and they're all coming with this common vision of planting churches, multiplying churches in Japan. So we'd like to encourage you to continue praying that God would sustain our team with health, individual health with him, and that uh, we would continue to be faithful to the vision he has given us. So please continue praying. Um, and this is a picture of, it's the picture of our home, for one thing. If you look, uh, it's not a big space, but God provided us an apartment. And in that apartment, God uh, determined that he would multiply uh, a small group, a, a church. And so the people you see here were the members, are the members of our small church. We, we're called the Yamabuki Small Church in Tokyo. Now our team, we are a church planting team. Um, but we're not so interested, we're not focused on planting uh, churches with the building, so to speak, but we're interested in focusing on small groups like this who gather for worship and have a missional mindset to preach the gospel in everyday life and make disciples. And so this is our heart for every member in the group. And uh, I, I'm so excited to have a chance to share during the Sunday school hour, but uh, just briefly, when you see these faces, I want to encourage you to just look at each face, even though you don't know their name, and pray, may every person in this community, may every face that I see treasure you more, treasure Jesus Christ above all else. And that's the same prayer we'd ask that you pray for us as well. Oh, one, of, one of the things heavy on our hearts has been community outreach. How do we reach out beyond the people that we already know, beyond uh, the students who might come to our house church? And we've been praying this prayer for several years. God, how can we reach out to our community? And I know many of you have been praying along with us, so we just want to praise the Lord that um, in the last year, He's really opened a floodgate of um, entrance into the community. When our little girl Brooke started preschool last, last spring, we met so many families and have had so many opportunities. And here are just, just a few of those faces of people that we see literally every day and, and get to have really gospel-centered conversations with. And um, God's even opened the doors for a, a small family Bible study. So when you pray for the community, um, our, our heart is really that God might open the door for um, more family groups to start too. So thank you so much for, for how you've lifted us up in that way. And we want to we praise God for how he's working. Yeah, so once again, um, just to recap real quick, we, when we went to Japan and when we returned for the first time to Japan in 2016, there was one small church, and it had about uh, 12 members or so. 
but that church actually grew to uh, outgrew the house that we were meeting in. And so we started to pray, Lord, where should we go now next? And then God brought people into our lives, or a Bible study started, and that became the church that met in our home. And there was another family in that original group um, who was feeling called to start a group in their neighborhood, where they were from. So we've seen that one group multiply into three groups, and that's all, that's all God's work. Um, so we really just want to celebrate that with you and say, God is working. Don't give up on praying. Those other missionaries you're praying for and supporting as a church, God is working around them. Don't give up on them. Keep, keep pressing on and, and walking beside them in ministry. Just thank you so much for partnering with us. And uh, if you want to hear more, you're welcome to join us in the library during the Sunday school hour. Thank you so much. And if you don't receive our updates, there's a little table where you can sign up for it easily. Yeah, we just want to say a big thank you. We're going to pray for them. Yes, go ahead. We're going to pray for the Lees. So those of you who are on the Missions Commission and desire to come up and uh, gather around them, we're going to pray. But uh, we're, we're going to pray for them, and then we're just going to go right into our congregational prayer. One of the things that we do, if you're a new person here this morning, uh, that we do here at Liberty, that's just a little bit different than a lot of other churches, is we allow individuals during our congregational prayer time to acknowledge uh, maybe that they have a specific uh, need of prayer. It could be uh, something difficult going on in their life, it could be a health issue, it could be children, it could be financial, it could be a decision, it could be a praise, it could be a hundred different things. We don't uh, allow them to say anything. But they acknowledge that uh, they've got something, you know, a, a burden on their heart, and they want prayer for us simply by standing. And by standing, that's them saying, yeah, uh, there's something specific going on in my life or the life of someone I know um, that I want to stand and, and pray on behalf of. And so um, um, Tom Cooney, who's part of our mission commission, who's also our elder, is going to pray for the leads first, and then he's going to um, pray. So if... If you're an individual this morning who has a specific prayer need or a prayer burden and desire to stand and acknowledge that, uh, then we'll usually those people who know them who are sitting close to them will gather around them. But uh, go ahead and stand at this point uh, right now. Okay. I'm going to ask uh, Tom to uh, lead us in prayer for the leads and for our church family. Let's bow our hearts and minds in prayer. Lord, we pray especially for those that have stood, and Lord, you know their hearts and their needs. We give their issues up to you, and we pray that uh, your spirit would be upon them. We thank you for uh, everything that you do for us. Lord, we want to especially pray for John and Joe Beth. They're such a blessing to get to know, and uh, they have such a beautiful family. We just thank you for them. We pray for their service in Japan, and we know that they're going to go back soon, and, and Lord, we just lift them up, pray that uh, they would have a great impact, that their next season there would be very fruitful, and that they would see your love going through others as they <clears throat> spread the gospel and, and give you the praise, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, we want to lift up Jordan also as he's in Australia for six months. We just pray especially for him. And Lord, we just pray that uh, his heart, we know his heart's for missions also, Lord, and, and we just pray that you would give him a spirit that he would know what to do. And Lord, we also pray for Adam, and we pray for his uh, well-being as he's in Israel and then going to go to Lebanon, and his desire to become a missionary to the Middle East. We just uh, know his, his heart is really there to be a part of ministry there, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we especially want to raise Jose and Anna this morning as they go to Omaha tomorrow <coughs> for their interview for asylum in our country. God, we just pray you would go before them. And we do pray that you would be there where Jesus is, that you would be the person that presents, and that the people that hear would know that they do need to be here with us. Lord, we thank you for that. They've been a blessing to our church as they've worshipped with us. <clears throat> and we do give them up where we trust you in everything that happens there. Lord, we want to lift up Tom as he's going to have hip surgery. And uh, we just pray that things go well there. 
Lord Rowan left up Ron because he's having terrible back issues and, and uh, we just pray that the things and the steps that go on here in the future would be things that would uh, help him to get back up on his feet and get going and find an employment again. Lord, we just love him and we care so much about him and hate to see him hurt so bad. Lord, we <clears throat> thank you for the youth being involved in Winter Blast in the past. And Lord, we pray for the young people that visited our church through these events, the Super Bowl party and, and the Winter Blast. And Lord, we just pray that these young people that visited, that they would come back tonight, Lord, and, and that uh, if they don't know you, Jesus, that they could seek you and that they would know that you're your Savior and that they would get saved and ask you in their heart. Lord, all these things we ask and we praise you and give you the honor and glory. We pray for Dane as he preaches this morning and we pray that your word will be on our hearts and that the Spirit will move us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. As they're uh, leaving the stage, just want to make you mindful. Um, like John said, you are invited during our Sunday school hour, which starts at about uh, 5 till 11. Um, the library, which is the room right there uh, by the entrance, you're invited to go and hear about them, share more about their time in Japan. We will still be having our regular Sunday school classes, so um, you can either attend one of those, or you can attend the uh, session with uh, John and Joe Beth. So um, we'll be uh, starting those at 10.55. Uh, at um, those of you who took baby bottles for Pathways, it's their fundraiser, fill them with change. Some of you brought them back today. Um, we would ask that uh, they would be uh, uh, due uh, next Sunday. So if you forgot to bring them today, um, kids, continue to, to just uh, tell your mom and dad to fill those bottles with change and bring them back next Sunday. Ladies, uh, quilting group tomorrow, those of you who like to sew or quilt or would like to learn how, um, they always uh, have a good-sized group of ladies at uh, 9 o'clock, uh, meet uh, down in the, uh, uh, the kitchen area, and uh, they have uh, uh, sewed several quilts for uh, people in need, and they've been uh, really a, a quite an outreach, quite honestly, for um, our team. Um, last weekend uh, was uh, two very special events. Uh, first of all, it was Winter Blast, where a few hundred Middle schoolers went to Hidden Acres, along with Pastor Rob with uh, the middle schoolers from our school and several leaders. So he was there Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning, got back, and two hours later had the high school Super Bowl party, uh, which is uh, a major outreach um, for us. So I'm going to ask Pastor Rob real quick, uh, Kevin, if you can uh, dial his mic up a little bit. He's going to share about his uh, uneventful weekend last weekend. Thanks, Dan. It was it was a great weekend. Thank you for your prayers. Um, we definitely felt them as as uh, adults. Um, those weekends tend to suck the energy and life out of us. Um, but then they like inject us with a ton of energy and life. It was so much fun to just be with uh, with with students and, and being able to just do life with them. So for Winter Blast, uh, our our focus for the weekend was follow, um, and and the students were being challenged by uh, who who is it that you're following. And, and just being honest about, you know, we're all following someone. And so uh, what was really, really fun is uh, just the great conversations that, that we had in our small group time uh, with, our, with our junior high students and, and just uh, how God was really speaking to them and challenging them. And, and you could really just hear it coming from their heart as, as they were sharing uh, just, just the things that uh, they were hearing. Um, it was great throwing kids on sleds and watching them get ramped into the air. I mean, those were always fun things. And uh, especially one that had a broke foot in and she went three foot in the air, and it was fun. Um, but she's all good, so it was great. Uh, it, it, it was just, it was a really great, great weekend. And um, we are thankful the weather was awesome, because that has not always been the case at uh, Hidden, Ac Hidden Acres. Um, but uh, for, for any of you, if you've been to Hidden Acres, you know it's just a beautiful place. It's, it's a great place um, just to hear God in a, in a different way. And uh, so it was a lot of fun um, just, to, just to spend that time and, um, the leaders and, and I, we, we had a great time um, with, the, with the kids, and they were just so much fun. And, uh, and I, I think every student that went just had an absolute blast. Um, so that was great. And then uh, our Super Bowl party, um, you know, our heartbeat there is uh, for, for students to just uh, be able to invite friends to something that's fun. 
um, where the halftime entertainment is appropriate. And uh, uh, we, my buddy CJ uh, came, came down and, and uh, shared the gospel and, and shared uh, just some, some good truth with our students and, and uh, got to drag a bunch of kids around in his turnout gear on the stage. That was a lot of fun. And uh, so, uh, you know, we had, we had several students that uh, came uh, that night that uh, haven't come to our church before. And it was great just to have some interaction with them. And um, so it was, it, was a, it was a fun, fun weekend. Uh, we we cover your prayers, and, and I appreciate Tom, um, just his prayer of, of desiring uh, students to come back. And, and that's our heartbeat, is that, uh, you know, we, we do these things for purpose, and that's we, we really desire to see students come to know Jesus and to grow in their heart and in their walk with Jesus. So um, just uh, just want to thank you for your prayer for that and, and, can, and ask that you continue to just lift our students um, in prayer. And what he says is true. Uh, we actually have a testimony of individuals who came to the Super Bowl party. Very first time they'd ever experienced the liberty and uh, started coming to youth group, came to know the Lord Christ as their Savior, and, uh, and are, are now pursuing uh, ministry. And so uh, those kinds of events are important. And it's because of your faithfulness um, with your resources that we're able to do these types of things. Let's go ahead and stand. We're going to sing one more song, and then we're going to dig into God's Word here.
Bible app, uh, go ahead and turn to Numbers chapter 6. Number chapter 6. Uh, we showed that video uh, last week as well. And uh, uh, by the way, are there any Happy Chiefs fans around here? Woo! Shit, that's lame. All right. <laughs> But uh, we showed that video here last week, and uh, as I recall, um, I, my memories of this were two ways. Number one, when I was a little kid, I grew up in a church where they had the choir loft in the back and uh, behind the pulpit, and uh, about once every three Sundays, they would close the service with that song. Um, however, I, I was glad that the choir loft sort of uh, became a thing of history, because I can remember when I was growing up, all you would do instead of listening to the sermon is watch the people behind him as one person is filing her fingernails, another person is sort of <laughs> nodding off to sleep, and uh, you, you spend more time fit. So I'm glad there's no choir. But also, um, for several years when my kids were in high school, um, at well, one of their spring concerts every year, they would sing this song. But um, you say, boy, those are great words. Well, yeah, they're great words. They come right out of the scriptures. Numbers chapter 6. Starting with verse 22, it says this. Aaron is told to give a blessing to the people. And here's the blessing he's told to give by the Lord himself. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his son and saying, You shall bless the people of Israel and this is what you will say to them. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And basically last week I made the comment that this was Aaron's blessing for Israel, but you can't just leave it with Israel. Um, you look at this blessing and say, yes, the Lord told Moses to speak to Aaron and say this to the people of Israel. But you need to jump ahead a few centuries. Turn to Psalm chapter 67. Psalm 67. Why did the Lord want to bless the people? Well, the Lord wanted to bless his people. The writer in Psalm 67, we're not sure who exactly it is, but he's under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He is writing scripture as the Holy Spirit moves him. And here's what he uses, and he quotes Numbers chapter 6, but he also includes something else. He says, may God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, so that your way may be known on earth, and your saving power would be known among all the nations. And so basically, this writer turns Aaron's blessing for Israel and turns it into a blessing that is a basically missional prayer. It is a prayer that's saying, I want to pray a blessing on you. Why? So that you will turn around and be a blessing to the nations. And last week, we looked at several passages of Scripture and basically, what you find, if you read from the beginning of the Bible all the way to the end, one of the themes that you will constantly, constantly see is that the Bible is a missions handbook. It's not just about me. It's about people all over the world. And you don't have to... Go to some minuscule verse to say, see, here's what it says. It's all over the scriptures. So when it comes to reaching the nations for Christ, as we are joining with the least to do, which we are joining with many others to do, which we are called to do as well, you don't have to spend hours looking for texts or verses or passages. They're all over it. It's, it's one of the themes of scripture is that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be our substitute, to pay the price, because we couldn't pay the price ourselves, and because we were undeserving, He died in our place, and the result is, is that we could experience new life, and that we would share that new life with others. 
And so from beginning to end, it's about missions. You see this word nations all the time in the scripture. Now what you need to understand is nations, when it says in the scripture, does not refer to geographical boundaries. Basically, nations is best translated peoples or people groups. So you could have a geographical nation and have 20 people groups in that nation. Why? They speak an entirely different language. They have entirely different customs. They, have a, they, they might even be at odds with one another. And so when you see that word nations as you read scripture, don't think of geographic. Think of people that are unique than any other people that are around them. And it could be a, a group of 10 people, could be a group of million people. But you see this speckled all over the scriptures. Psalm 86, there is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. Psalm 96, declare the Lord's glory among the nations. Declare his marvelous works among the peoples. Isaiah 49, I will make you as a light for the nations, so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. So all over Psalms, Isaiah, I know their works and thoughts, says the Lord. The time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and they shall see my glory. Now jump ahead several centuries. Jesus, he has died, he has been buried, he has risen again. He's about to ascend to his kingly throne. And he gives some last minute directives. And what is on Jesus' heart in those last moments with his disciples? <clears throat> the nations. There's two different spots. Matthew chapter 28. It's one that we most know from most familiar. It's called the Great Commission. And Jesus says to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. And behold, I will live, be with you always to the end of the age. Now another one that we, we uh, don't uh, listen to quite as much is Luke chapter 24, but it's still a commission. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and then he said to them, Thus it is written, The Christ will suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. And then last, let's jump into the future. Jump into the future. What's going to happen? Revelations chapter 7, verse 9. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands. And they were crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All tribes, peoples, languages. So God's plan is that the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And so here's what the scripture says. The scripture says this, number one. God has a love and a compassion and a heart for all peoples, all nations, all languages, all tribes. He has a heartbeat of compassion and love for those people. What it also means is he has that same compassion and love for you. He was willing to send his own son to die on a cross because you couldn't do anything about your sin. And so he has that love and compassion for you, but he also has that same love and heartbeat for people around the world. If God has a heart for all these people, then you and I, if we want to have the same heart that God has, should grow more and more aware 
of that compassion as well. And the second thing I think this tells us is that one of the signs that you are growing, not, not the only, but one of the signs that you are growing more in your affection and pleasure and delight in Christ is you will also grow in God's heart for the nations. It will not always be about you. It will be about, Lord, this is your heartbeat. May it be my heartbeat as well. And as you grow to appreciate God more, you will also see a growth in your appreciation for the nations. And you will realize, oh, the reason that I've been saved, one of the reasons that I've been saved is that God expects me to be a blessing to the other nations. And that can be worked out in a thousand different ways. But as you grow in your relationship with Christ, you will see his compassion, his willingness to die. And Lord, you will see that compassion grow in your own heart. Here's reality. And this is going to be sort of one of those sucker punches. In my life and in your life, stepping on toes. Because this will sort of show you where you are on the radar. Because I know in my own life, this is reality about me. I'm going to give you three questions. Number one, you are about to make a major financial decision. A major financial decision. How many of you, when you're about to make a major financial decision, sit down and not only think about one, two, three, and four things, but you also think, how is this going to affect my ability to bless the nations? Can I be honest? Sometimes it's not even on the radar. It's not even on the radar. And yet, that's one of the reasons God saved me. Second, you make decisions on how you use your time and your skills and your resources. How many times do you sit and think, how can I best use my time, my skills, my abilities, and my resources to best make sure that I'm a blessing to the nations? It doesn't even enter our, our, our mind. Third, Prayer. How often do you pray for a group of people that has never had the gospel preached to? How often do you intentionally pray for this group of people that you've never met on the other side of the world that has never had anybody go and preach the gospel to them? I'd say most of us, we had to admit, it's not on the radar. Prayer amounts to basically, Lord, I need this, I need this, I need this, and I need this. And so I think the question that we all need to ask in, in, result, in response to that is not shame and guilt, hopefully conviction from the Holy Spirit, but to ask the question, well, how can I grow my heart and my mind to be more in love with the nations? Uh, to put it front and center, let, let me give you just a few very simple things to do. Not really things to do, to become. Because number one is, how can I grow in my heart and love for the nations? The best way is grow. Grow in your affection and love and delight and pleasure of Jesus. Because if you're not growing in your love and delight and pleasure of Jesus, everything else that I mentioned from now on is going to be done out of a, either a religious or moral or guilt-driven obligation. 
Instead of no, my love for the nations is just flowing out of my love for Christ. And so, first of all, you just need to keep growing in your love and affection for Christ. Second, you might just go online and investigate, well, who are these people? Two websites that you can write down. Number one is peoplegroups.org. Peoplegroups.org, one word. Peoplegroups.org. It'll tell you where in the world have people not been reached yet. Another one is joshuaproject.net. Joshuaproject.net. Just go online. They will tell you where they live. There will be maps where you can tap on a dot. It will tell you who the people are, what their language are, how many of the people are who have been unreached. When you can visually see around the world what's going on, it will help. Number three, how about taking a short-term missions trip if you're able to do so? You want to open your eyes to the world? Go to the world. In my life, those short-term missions trips have been eye-opening. And that's why I keep going on, even as an old man. Fourth, pray. Pray for your own heart. Pray for an unreached people group. I, I know of a woman who has the map of all the unreached peoples around the world from dots. She puts it on a table and every day prays for a different group. We uh, had our, our missions commission come into the elders uh, and leadership community on Monday. And we heard a person that says, um, by the way, look on the back of your bulletin. Yeah, I know some of you. Why do we always put that stuff on the back of the bulletin? On the back of the bulletin is a list of all the missionaries that we support. And we had a person say he takes three a day and prays for three of them. So therefore, every week, he's prayed for every single missionary that we support. Sounds like a good idea. Five, how about making financial sacrifices for the nations? Where above and beyond what you give to the local ministry, you also decide, I'm going to give above that in an effort to support someone who's out there on the front lines, reaching out. I'd like to remind you that tomorrow the Journey Course starts. It's basically a course that's about the heart for the nations. They will have different speakers come in each week. They're fantastic communicators, and they've been on the missions field. And they will tell you about what God's Word has to say about, about the world. Many of you have taken perspectives. This is sort of a mini perspective. How can we better encourage those who are on the field? Well, how about we not ask me? How about we ask someone who's out there? So let's welcome back John to the uh, stage here. And uh, I, I, I called him earlier this week. I said, hey, we're talking about the nations. And I, wanna, I want you to answer a question. Give him time to think about it. The question's on the screen. What are two things that I wish people would either know or do that would encourage us as missionaries overseas that maybe they're not doing now? All right? It's okay to give them a second welcome. Uh, well, Pastor Dan, I have to admit, I racked my brain for two things, and only one thing came to mind. Um, we must be doing good. <laughs> And that was the, the word advocate. Advocate. We need advocates. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Sorry. Uh, advocate. Um, now, an advocate is someone who, rec who stands for someone, who's a voice for someone, and makes it heard in larger circles, whether in the public sphere or among your church or among your small groups. Um, and that's what we need. So I'm thinking about three areas. So it's kind of a sneaky one. It's like one big thing, but you have several things to do in it. Um, uh, the first one is prayer. An advocate is a prayer warrior who really keeps in touch with us, who keeps in touch with you know, your missionaries, uh, but not just missionaries. You have staff who need advocates. You have uh, child care teams who need advocates. Uh, people who, I don't know, if, oh, I think you have a Awana program here, right? Uh, you know, there are people serving in Awana, they need advocates, people who stand by them and know 
what they're going through and not just uh, are looking for the fruits of, of what they accomplish. Um, people who pray alongside them. So prayer is one thing that an advocate does. Another thing is communication. Uh, an advocate is aware of the needs and the seasons of life and ministry that uh, we're going through and they communicate it to the right circles, whether that's to a missions committee or whether that's to a, great, a broader congregation, whether that's praying for us up here like, like Tom has done for us. Um, and another thing is mobilization. So I believe that when you, when you come alongside someone, you, you come alongside them with a heart not just so that you kind of like a, a personal like checklist so you can like clear your conscience and say, you know, I've, I've done my, my job of coming alongside them. But you want to see others come alongside them as well. So you mobilize other people to pray. You mobilize other people to meet the needs that are becoming apparent of, of, of the workers on the field or among your congregation. Um, you have a heart to uh, see those needs and see them met by the people around, around you. Um, and so those are three things that we see in an advocate and we have been blessed by. And I just want to share a quick story. Um, there's an advocate among one of our supporting churches. She saw that we were going to have a baby. She saw that we were up to our necks in uh, ministry opportunities and family responsibilities, and we were communicating to her, you know, we're going to have a baby. We don't know if we're ready. Pray for us, <laughs> basically. And, uh, and so she prayed. She brought that need to her, to the missions committee, and to her church. And then as they prayed together, God set on the hearts of, of one of the couples to think about coming to Japan and helping us uh, through that, those first couple weeks of having a baby. Um, so they prayed about it, and it turns out that God would send them that couple, not the original advocate, but a couple that heard from the advocate, uh, that God would send them to Japan to help us through that, that really challenging season. Um, and what a blessing. We didn't even know we needed it, but God knew we needed it. And it's because of the faithfulness of the advocate uh, to represent us to their local community that God uh, fulfilled that need. Um, so, yeah, just an example and an encouragement to you. You have people who, who could use your partnership today right next to you. We could use it. There are people right next to you in the, in the pews, I'm sure. Um, yeah, thank you for giving me an opportunity. Okay. I'll just share real quickly a thank you for praying for us, too. Um, we're not superheroes. I'm a frazzled stay-at-home mom, and we really feel it when you pray and um, we just want to thank you so much for that. I know John highlighted it um, in advocacy, but we, we really, really value those prayers too. Thank you. Okay, Chiefs fan, I'm going to give you another opportunity. How about those Chiefs? Well, it was uh, quite, a, quite a game, and uh, one of the things that you don't realize that happened is, you know, most people don't have five, six thousand dollars to buy a Super Bowl ticket. So most of the Kansas City Chiefs fans were in Kansas City. And when they won the game, so many fireworks went up into the air that the National, River, National Weather Service radar, as you see on the screen, was able to basically see clusters of fireworks in the atmosphere. It was such a celebration that they were able to pinpoint, even on radar from outer space, the celebration that was taking place in Kansas City and the surrounding area. Here's my challenge as we close. Wouldn't it be amazing if somehow we could see a spiritual radar that tracked two things. First of all, the first map would go up. Pella, Iowa, and the surrounding areas, wherever you live. And it would be able to track which homes there is prayer rising, pleading with God for those who are serving on the front lines, but also pleading with God with a sincere heart that all these peoples would be reached. That there would be pleading in their hearts that, that people would be raised up to go. 
And there would be pleading in our hearts, Lord, show me how I can best be the advocate. Wouldn't that be amazing if in the Pell area we saw all these red dots from the spiritual radar of homes that were interceding on behalf of the peoples of the nations, that Christ would become known to them. And then secondly, another radar, and here's the radar that shows which homes are truly sacrificing their time, their talents, their abilities, and their finances. Are truly being sacrificial in order for those prayers to be answered. That would be a most amazing thing. Now let's start at your home. Would your home, starting today, be one of those homes that has the red light on it? The blue light. Basically saying, this is a home that's in prayer and in sacrifice in order to be a blessing to the nations. May that be. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would stir in our hearts a renewed desire not to be so focused on ourselves, but Lord, that we would lift our hearts and our minds and our eyes to our next door neighbors, the people in our block, the people in our work circles, and people around the world. Give us a growing appetite. Give us a growing hunger to cry out on their behalf and to do as you would desire us to do in order to reach them. We pray this all in Jesus' name.
song. Um, I, I love this song because it, it just talks about um, us making a, a choice of who we're going to follow and who we're going to pursue. And, uh, and it's a hard choice for us to make. Um, but it, it's my prayer that we would choose to lay our, our life at the feet of Jesus and choose to run to Him.
Once again, you're invited to either do one or two things during our Sunday school hour. You can either go to the library and hear a presentation from Lee's, or you can attend one of our regular Sunday school classes. If you want to know what the options are, out by the coat racks, there's a little stand that gives you all the uh, classes that are offered, plus uh, the numbers. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened up their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem and spreading from there. And you are my witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending you the promise of my Father upon you, the Holy Spirit. Stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the challenge that your word gives us. Lord, we pray that you would enlarge our love and compassion and mercy towards those who don't know you. Pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here this morning. You are dismissed at this time.